The Project Japan. Tokyo is undergoing a certain change now. In a cityscape dominated by concrete structures, architecture with prominent wooden designs is springing up. About two thirds of the Japanese islands are covered in forests, and for a country such as Japan, where subterranean resources are scarce, wood is seen as an essential circulatory resource. Wood also has what's called a carbon fixation capability, an advantage which could help solve the world's environmental problems. But why is timber architecture in the spotlight now? We spoke with Mikio Koshihara, a leading researcher in the field. Timber architecture in Japan until now could only be applied to two-story homes, for instance, or low-rise buildings, such as two-story schools and government offices in outlying regions. With changes in the law, it's become possible to apply it to high-rises, and that started in the year 2000. And now, in the 2020s, it's become relatively easier to do this because of technological advancements in areas such as earthquake and fire resistance. That's not to say the hurdles are lower, but it certainly has become relatively easier to build multi-story wooden structures. In 2010, the Japanese government established the Act on the Promotion of the Utilization of Wood in Public Buildings, with the aim of encouraging the use of wood to cultivate forests and revitalize the forestry industry. One of the earliest to take action was Takenaka Corporation. Takenaka last year completed Flats Woods Kiba, a 12-story hybrid wooden structured building, the tallest of its kind in Japan at the time. Equipped with a seismic isolation system, it adopted a range of the latest timber construction technologies. The property is used as a furniture and service-inclusive corporate dormitory with a total of 250 rooms. In 2008, the company completed a reinforced concrete apartment building called Flats Toyo on the same property, creating a distinctive contrast of two square-shaped buildings. By setting up two buildings of a similar scale, they were able to compare the costs and construction times using different materials. Jun Shimada is an architect responsible for the design of Flats Woods Kiba. He showed us inside. We're taken to the top 12th floor. He says one of the building's core technologies can be found here. A core technology in building this wooden high-rise is this column called Moin wood. There are two specifications. Fire resistance of either one hour or two hours. When constructing buildings with five floors or more, Columns and beams that are resistant to fire for two hours or more are required under the building standards law. The column in here is fire resistant for an hour and the one over there for two hours. At first glance, they appear to be ordinary wooden columns, but they incorporate a technology that allows them to meet requirements under Japan's building standards law. How exactly do they work? He takes us to the cafeteria for residents and shows us something which reveals the structure of the columns. This is furniture used by the residents. And each of these chairs are models showing the cross-section of the wooden columns used in this building. These two are Moin wood columns which I showed you earlier. This is the two-hour fire-resistant mowing wood column, and this is the one-hour fire-resistant mowing wood column. The inner section is the wood structure, and the outer section has a fire stop layer and a wood finish layer. It comprises of three layers. In Japan, when constructing a building of this scale, the building standards law requires it to be fire resistant, meaning it won't collapse even if the fire burns for two hours. The outer layer is the part that protects the building from fire. 
Therefore, the structure of the building itself can be sustained with just a central section, the wood structure. Takenaka Corporation, which constructed Flats Woods Kiba, is a general contractor that traces its roots to carpentry, specializing in shrines and temples. They are among the earliest in the industry to develop and commercialize fire-resistant laminated lumber and cross-laminated timber technologies for use in mid- and high-rise buildings. What exactly is their corporate philosophy? We spoke with Hiroyuki Matsuzaki, a senior advisor of the Wooden Architecture Promotion Department. Due to climate change measures and decarbonization, we need to promote the use of wood, which is a circulatory resource. We need to promote wooden architecture as environmental architecture. We believe it's a global trend now. In Japan today, forest devastation and the decline of the forestry industry are major social issues. Typhoons can cause landslides and flooding. Such disasters occur because forests aren't being properly managed and maintained. Forests thrive when we use them. Many forests in Japan are planted. This resource continues to grow and the government has been pursuing policies to promote the use of wood. The forestry cycle entails planting, growing and cutting and using. That's the cycle of the forest, but we're taking an even broader view of the circulation of the economy and resources, including regional revitalization, cascade use, and wood biomass, which we call the forest grand cycle. Takenaka's forest grand cycle is a sustainable cycle of forest resources and the local economy. By utilizing wood in big cities, the company aims to prevent forest devastation and the decline of the forestry industry and realize a sustainable society. Their technology to utilize the abundance of timber in Japan isn't limited to Moen wood. This low table actually uses a wooden structural panel called CLT. In fact, the entire floor of this cafeteria is supported by this panel. CLT stands for cross-laminated timber, and it has a total of nine layers, each stacked crosswise at 90 degrees and glued together. It's 270 millimeters thick and is a very tough structural material. Japan, as you know, is prone to earthquakes, and there have been many major fires in the past. So earthquake resistance and fire resistance are crucial. Implementing designs that meet the building standards law is what requires the most innovation. One of the features of this building is that we set up the common use area on the 12th floor. On the top floor, the fire resistance requirement is for one hour, so we're able to use materials with one hour fire resistance, and there are fewer restrictions on the interior design. We can also freely choose the angle of the roofs. Therefore, we have greater freedom in terms of design, Above all, this place has a spectacular view, and we really wanted the residents to be able to enjoy the scenery. What do the residents living in this corporate dormitory think about their living environment? I was very excited when the HR department uh, asked me if I wanted to move into this department, to this dormitory. Uh, the room is very comfortable. Um, uh, they put, it's fully equipped and fully uh, furnished. I also like that the uh, furniture is also made of wood. Uh, it gives more warmth. The room itself isn't that big, and there isn't space to put many things. But because of the wood, you feel a natural sense of warmth. Throughout history, Japanese people have lived in woody spaces, so I think we have a preference for that. Is a space with wood really that comfortable? We spoke with Masaki Sugiyama, who researches the relationship between people and wood. We constructed an experimental model home on the grounds of the Forestry and Forest Products Research Institute. 
We set up two rooms, one with a wooden interior and one without, and two subjects moved in, allowing us to measure certain indicators. For example, we were able to acquire data showing that with a wooden interior, a person's pulse rate doesn't increase as much and that it helps reduce stress. Research into the benefits of wood until now has tended to focus on just the sense of smell or touch or the visual appeal of experimental and model spaces. We're also focusing on quantifying the benefits, such as whether working people can relax, productivity can increase, or in the case of commercial facilities, whether customer traffic grows. Ginza, a major shopping district in Japan. A project is underway here to build a new commercial facility on the main street that incorporates wood throughout to promote greater use of the resource. They've adopted a hybrid structure with fire-resistant laminated lumber for the front section and steel on the central part. Using timber makes it possible to be environmentally friendly, as well as offer a more visually appealing building. Some companies even request wood from specific regions. Timber high-rises are seen to address a number of social issues in Japan, but will they become more widespread? Medium and high-rise timber architecture is something that hasn't existed in the more than 1,000-year history of timber architecture in Japan. We believe fundamental functions such as earthquake resistance, fire resistance and livability are important, of course, but also making timber architecture more attractive. As we develop timber architecture, we also believe that it will be equally as important to promote the fact that we've addressed the drawbacks associated with wood construction. Going forward, we want to develop wood construction technologies that meet the toughest fire resistance standards in the world. And instead of steel and concrete, build timber architectural structures. Timber architecture is seen as contributing to the realization of sustainable societies, leveraging their advanced earthquake resistance, fire resistance and design capabilities. Japanese companies are continuing to take on this challenge.